magnetism unit and we are going to start um, with concept one notes um, talking about charge. So I know in my class we have not covered chemistry yet and that will be coming in the future but there is a kind of brief background I have to give you on matter in order for you to understand how electricity works. So all that being said Matter is anything that has mass and it takes up space. And all matter is made of something called atoms. An atom is considered the simplest form of matter, and it's made of protons, which are positive. The notation we use to abbreviate them is P+. Plus. Neutrons, which have, or have a neutral charge, so they are N0. And then electrons, which are E-, minus, that have a negative charge. Structurally in an atom, there's a dense center called the nucleus, and that's where the positive protons and the neutral neutrons are. And they are held very tightly together. And there's a lot of energy there that makes it very hard um, to pull these apart. Surrounding the positively charged nucleus are the negative electrons on the outside. And they're traveling kind of crazily around the nucleus, and they're much easier to move. Um, because they're not held so tightly together. And so that's something really important to understand about electrons. In general, in an atom, the number of protons equals the number of electrons. So the atom overall is electrically neutral. Like if I have three positive protons and three negative electrons, if I add those together, that gives me an overall charge of zero. So we would say that the atom is electrically neutral. Now, if E can move around, though, which they can, we can create an imbalance of charge. And when we do that, that can cause something called static electricity. So, in class, there's a three-minute video clip we're going to watch about static electricity that does an amazing job of explaining it. But for the purposes of this, we're going to move forward. So, hopefully what you'll see in that video that we will watch is... That static electricity is something we've probably all experienced, as you can see by the picture of this little girl. It's a charge imbalance, and it results in the buildup of excess, so extra electric charge on an object. And when this happens, um, objects have loosely held E built up on their surface. And when you experience a shock, that is because that charge that that person has, that buildup of charge on them, is neutralized um, by touching you. Um, and so you feel that shock resulting from that static electricity. So you may have experienced it um, if you've ever, you know, gone down a slide and then touched somebody, or if you've pulled a sweater in the wintertime out of your dryer and put it on and it's kind of shocked you. Those might be kind of instances where you've experienced this charge imbalance called static electricity. And that shock you felt was actually neutralization of that charge. So we have a couple rules about charge um, that hopefully you can um, deduce from this picture. So opposite charges attract positive and negative here. So positive and negative charges, they will attract like charges like a negative and negative or a positive positive will repel from each other. Another rule related to charge is called the law of conservation of charge. And this says that charge cannot be created or destroyed. It's only transferred. So net electric charge is always constant. So similar to other law of conservations of momentum and energy that we've learned, same idea. We're not creating or destroying these negative or positive charges. It's only, we're only having charge be transferred. So something really important to understand about objects that have an electric charge is the electric field that they can give off. So this is an area that surrounds charged particles or objects within which a force, so go flashback to our force unit, can actually be exerted on other charged particles or objects. So for example, this balloon, if I rub it on my leg, it can create a buildup of um, charge and that imbalance is static electricity and surrounding the balloon it's giving off this electric field which could allow me to pick up these pieces of paper 
with the force that that fuel gives off. Even without touching them, this balloon can pick them up. So electric fields allow charges to act at a distance. The field can also move the charges around um, an object that is near to it. Charged particles placed in the electric field can be pushed or pulled by the force exerted by the field. So clearly if these pieces of paper are attracted to the balloon and are picked up by it, they must have been oppositely charged from the balloon. If they're repelled, they would have a like charge. So that's kind of reviewing those charge rules we just discussed. So how do we know if something has a charge? Well, there's a pretty simple tool we can use called an electroscope, and it can detect the presence and the magnitude of an electric charge. And so if I bring a negatively charged rod towards the electroscope, I can know that it has a negative charge by the way that the electroscope moves. And this is something that will be demonstrated in class to you, which will make it make a little bit more sense. Now, some materials are really good at transferring charge and others are not. And these are words that are similar um, to ones you've heard before in, when we learned about thermal energy and heat transfer. And that's conductor and insulator. Slightly different definition though in the context of electricity. So conductors are materials that allow electrons, that's my E minus, that's my abbreviation for electrons, to flow easily. So we could say they readily conduct electric charge. What are things that conduct electric charge? Well, metals, especially copper. A lot of wires have copper in them. And then also your skin is a great conductor of electricity, which is why, you know, you feel shocks and things like that. Insulators are materials that block the flow of electrons through them. That's things like plastic, wood, air, rubber, glass, that kind of thing. So what's interesting is actually the um, anatomy of a wire, if you will. You tend to have metal within the wire to conduct that electric charge and allow it to flow. And then surrounding the wire is rubber or plastic to protect and insulate people like us from getting shocked by the wire. So if you were to cut open, you know, if I was to cut open the charger right now that's keeping my computer on, um, there would be wire inside conducting that charge. But on the outside, there's this nice rubber outside to protect me from getting shocked by that charge. Now, Similar to what we learned with thermal energy, there's three ways that charge can be transferred. Um, one of those ways is conduction. So just like with thermal energy, we're talking about direct contact here. So we're transferring electrons through direct contact. This rod touches this and it transfers electrons to it. You're moving from one object um, to another. The object must be a conductor in order to transfer that charge. So you can't transfer this charge, you know, from a conductor to an insulator because that insulator will resist that flow. So it has to be a conductor to another conductor in order for this to work. Another way that we can transfer charge is by friction. And this is something that if you've done the lab stations in my class already, you've experienced. You're transferring electrons through rubbing objects just to try to get that build up, get those electrons excited. So this is maybe if you've ever rubbed socks on carpet and then you've touched your sibling and shocked them. Um, or we did it with the balloon earlier too. These are all ways that we're charging by friction, by rubbing these objects. So a little bit more specific than just charging by conduction because we're actually rubbing to build up that friction. And then a third way is induction. So this is a transfer of electrons through electric fields. So we're talking over a distance. You're not actually touching anything, but you're inducing a charge. So what we have here is we have an electrically neutral object right here, and then we have a negatively charged rod. When I bring the negatively charged rod towards this object, like charges repel. So the electrons move backwards because they're repelled by this. That leaves the protons, which are positive, towards the front, which are attracted to this. So we're actually inducing a positive charge on this object. So we bring this charged object towards a neutral object. It causes something called polarization, and that's where the, they separate and we're inducing a charge on this neutral object. Um, this is how, if you've ever seen, if, we, if you, we did this in class already, the balloon sticking to the wall, it was through induction. Now, something that's um, pretty interesting is called static discharge, and this is lightning. This is a sudden flow of electric charge between two charged objects. 
and it's caused by a buildup of static electricity. And we'll watch, um, or if we haven't already, there's a couple videos and things we'll do with lightning in class because it's pretty interesting stuff. But just a little overview on how it actually goes down. Here's how um, this static discharge like lightning occurs. Basically, you have movement of clouds and air currents when you have a storm that cause a buildup of static electricity in the clouds. They cause this negative buildup of charge right here. When that buildup becomes great enough, it will actually induce a positive charge on Earth. So all of the negative electrons on Earth are repelled. They push backwards, leaving this positive charge in the, on the outer ends that it creates that attraction. When the attraction becomes great enough, the electrons will travel from the clouds to Earth to neutralize. And that's that bang we get of that lightning um, to try to neutralize that imbalance of charge. Now, one of the things we do to protect us from this is something called grounding. This is a process of actually removing excess charge on an object by transferring electrons to another object in order to neutralize the electrical imbalance. So it's basically redirecting the charge to the ground rather than to a building. So some buildings have you know, some sort of rod on them and then a wire that basically conducts that charge all the way to the ground where it would be grounded, basically underground essentially, to protect your house from it and it would all just be neutralized underground. If you've ever seen a picture of the Eiffel Tower, it has one of these mechanisms on it, which is pretty cool. All right, so now we're gonna practice.